Today we're going to recover how to replace files in a directory. Doing this basically consists of two steps. The first is searching for a specific pattern in that directory. And the second is actually replacing those files with the new name. And that new name will be the original files name. Let me show you what I mean. So let's take a look inside this folder. We have two files. File.txt, which if we open it, we'll say I'm the original file. And the other file we have is file.replace.txt. And this says I will become the new file to replace the old, but have the same name as the old. So essentially when we run this script, we're expecting this file.replace to disappear, but these content values to be inside this file with the same name, file.txt. So as an example, I'll execute the script and we'll see it happen and then I'll show you how to create the script yourself. So I'm just going to execute it now. Boom. We see that file.replace.txt disappeared and if we open this, we sure enough, we see the contents of that inside file.txt. So now I'll show you how to program this with PowerShell. Okay, so let's start as we always do by making this script easy to use for DevOps purposes or just you know to be able to call the script by itself and just pass the parameters over. So we'll start by writing param, it's a string type and this is going to be called target files equals something. Target files is going to be the variable that's passed to match that pattern. So in this case in that previous example target files would be equal to, uh, what is it, replace dot. I'll explain why there's a dot at the end in a second. Uh, the next variable that we want to pass through is target rename. This is pretty self-explanatory. This is what we want to replace target files. Whenever we see replace dot, we're going to replace it with this variable, target rename. In this case, we just want it to be uh, empty. And finally, the last value is the directory. And we'll give a value to this later in a bit. The next step is doing a get child item. And we're going to save it to a variable. So files to replace equals get child item. So let's get all the items inside the given path of directory and filter it by anything that matches sorry anything that matches the pattern of target files and we want to go deep so we'll do recurse and finally we want to do full name to make sure that we get the path as well so we don't have any issues we want when we want to remove or rename uh, these items inside this list so the next thing we're going to do is make a loop. So in this case, we can do for each file and files to replace, AKA this filtered list of items that match the target files pattern inside the target directory that we gave. We are going to create a temporary variable called original file. That is equal to current file that we're looking at only it we're going to omit a certain part which is the pattern that we were looking for so what we're going to do here is use target files and we're going to replace it with not surprisingly target rename okay so the next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to delete the quote unquote original file. And that's as simple as saying remove item original file that force. And the final step is actually the renaming process, which is simple as using rename item, get the file that we're looking at and change it to the quote unquote original files name. And let's just do force to make sure it happens. Okay. So I just lied to you. The actual real last step is <laughs> giving a value for the directory by default, default value, I mean. Um, and uh, there's actually an error here too. There doesn't need to be a dot here. 
Okay, so let's take a look inside the new folder and see what we have. Okay, so we're inside the new folder, the directory that we're targeting. So we'll just call this file. And in here we have hello world. And let's make another file here. File second.txt on the second file. So when we run this, we're expecting file second.txt to disappear, but the contents inside here of what was on the second file to be inside file.txt, just like we did in the beginning. So what we have to do here is change this to match and let's hit run. Sure enough, we have one file and it's only file.txt. We open it up, it has the contents of file second.txt. So there's actually one final thing that you can do to make the script a little bit better, which is using test path to see if these files even exist in the first place and if they do or don't do or don't do something, right? So the first thing is, if the original file, quote unquote original file we're looking for exists, then actually remove it. If it doesn't, then maybe we'll just write a message to ourselves that that file can't be found, right? And obviously it's even better if you use try catch blocks and error handling, but for now we'll just suffice with this. Actually, I don't know why I'm writing write host here. I meant to write test path. If test path, original file, so if it exists, then let's remove it. If it doesn't, <clears throat> then let's just say that, you know, uh, couldn't find, could not find the file. All right, so that pretty much wraps it up. So it's been a quick, easy video. Uh, if you want the project files, they are linked on the project description as well as the pinned comment. The one that's on GitHub has a lot more comments and a few write hosts to make it a little bit easier to follow along. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment and ask. And if you have any other material you want to see that might help with your process or, or anything that you're doing with uh, PowerShell, um, Leave a comment and we'll see if we can tackle it together. All right, thanks for watching. Take care, everyone.